Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing uh, an introduction to ethics. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all the various ethical paradigms, all the various ethical theories. Uh, there are too many to name. I'm going to select some of what I think are the seminal uh, ideas, seminal approaches to ethics, uh, and give a very general, very introductory account of, um, of ethics. With that being said, uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time, and let's begin. So this is going to be an intro to ethics. Okay. Um, just first sort of uh, general information. Uh, anytime we're talking about ethics, ethics comes from the Greek word ethos, right? So ethics comes from the Greek ethos. Comes from the Greek word ethos, which means character. means character. Um, and obviously ethics is a theory about proper moral conduct, right? Um, so ethics is a theory of proper moral conduct. Uh, and what we're going to do in an analysis of ethics is we're going to try and attempt to um, define and identify what that proper moral conduct is. Um, the first place to begin then in a discussion of ethics is to make a distinction, right? Um, and to understand sort of what the ethical terms are. So, for example, if you're reading literature, um, identifying some of these terms might serve as an indication that what is being suggested is an ethical claim, right? Because ethics doesn't describe the world, right? Ethics, ethics does not... Nothing does not describe the world. Right? It does not describe the world. That's not the function of ethics. It doesn't tell you what is the case, right? That's sort of the, the function of social science or science proper, to describe sort of um, phenomenal experience or the world or whatever. What ethics does, ethics make ethics makes prescriptive, makes prescriptions. So ethics makes prescriptions, right? They prescribe um, behavior. And the way that we identify um, these prescriptions is through the words ought. This is what you ought to do. This is what you should do. This is what you must do. And so on, right? So um, we know that we're making ethical claims, right? You're making an ethical prescription. If you say this is what you ought to do, right? You ought to... Um, care about your education. You should uh, attend class regularly. Um, you must uh, study for your examination, right? All of these terms um, are sort of the foundations for our language, right, for the lexicon of ethics. And basically all that we're trying to do is we're trying to make a distinction between what is the case, right, and what ought to be the case. Right, so here's what is the case. Here's what ought to be the case, and ethics, ethics um, is sort of the bridge between what is the case and what ought to be the case, right? What is the case? What ought to be the case? Ethics sort of prescribes how I move from this state of affairs into this state of affairs. So that's basically the function of, of ethics, right? So anytime we're talking about ethical theories in general, uh, in the most sort of abstracted sense, um, the theory is going to offer some, some type of prescription it's going to look at some particular phenomena in the world and say this is how we ought to uh, respond, conform to, adapt to a particular set of circumstances. Okay, so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty general. I have some room, so I'm going to use it. Okay, the next thing um, that we want to do is we want to be able to identify sort of the players in ethics, right? Um, and one of the key players is what's known as the moral agent. Agent. And the moral agent is uh, none other than uh, simply a person capable of reflecting on moral issues, right? The moral agent has the ability to reflect on moral issues um, and <clears throat> has the ability to base decisions based on that reflection, right? So the, the, the moral agent is autonomous, right? So that the moral agent, right, 
has the ability to reflect right on issues and then based on that reflection right if this is an ethical theory or law ethical law I make an description to this law and that law is going to tell me what I ought to do right so that what I can do is um, based on my knowing the law what the law is what the law says um, for example, the law might say, if you see someone in distress and you have the ability to save them, then you should, right? Then you ought to. Well, I see someone in distress. Um, I refer back to the ethical law, and the ethical law prescribes my behavior. And what do I do? I save the person, right? If I conform to the law, right? So when we talk about the distinction between morality or moral actions and immoral actions, So when we make the distinction between moral actions and immoral actions, it's pretty simple to see um, what moral actions are, what immoral actions are. If we have um, the law, and we have two sets of behaviors, we have behavior X and we have behavior Y. If we say that X conforms to the law, and we say that Y does not conform to the law, then it's easy to see which one is moral and which one is not. So that anytime we're talking about moral actions, moral actions conform to the law. The law says that I do X and I do X, right? So this is moral. If I do Y, well the law would have to say do not do Y, right? I can't do Y. So if the law says don't do Y, and I end up doing Y, Y does not conform to the law. It's not, it does not conform to what the law says to do. Therefore, I know that my action is immoral, right? So moral, just, and that's very, very general. That's very sort of, it's extremely generalized, but it's, it's simple enough. Um, in trying to make an assessment using, using an ethical theory in the determination of whether or not an action is either moral or immoral, all you have to do is look at the act and then look at what the law states. If the law states that that act is permissible, then the act is moral. If the law states that that act is not permissible and yet the moral agent, the moral agent does the act, then you know that that act, that behavior is immoral. So that I'm able to apply um, morality, right? I can able to make descriptions, prescriptions of moral behavior. I'm able to identify moral behavior from immoral behavior based on how the individual moral agent acts and whether or not his or her actions conform to the law. Those that conform to the law, moral. Those that don't conform to the law, immoral. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty simple. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to introduce you to uh, a, few, a few theories that I think are relevant, a few theories that I think um, you should know. Again, this is, uh, this is an introduction to ethics, um, and this is just to get your palate wet. Um, if there are particular ethical theories that you would like me to discuss, uh, send me a message, leave me a comment, um, and I'll start to create a list of particular ethical theories um, to discuss.